This is Lord Hastings Lionel Ismay, NATO's first Secretary General. He famously said that NATO was created to keep the Soviet Union out, the Americans in, and the Germans down. And for over 70 years, this strong transatlantic alliance has kept Europe safe from totalitarian expansion and made war impossible on the continent. But it seems like the times are changing, and Europe is facing a new reality. The once strong US presence and NATO guarantee are no longer as reliable as they once were. Issues like trade wars, climate change, the never-ending Ukraine war and energy security have come to the forefront. And the European Union is no longer content with relying solely on the US for its security. In today's video, we are going to explore the historical dimensions of the EU-US alliance, major hurdles including security, China issue, climate change and trade, and will the EU need a separate army? But before moving forward, we would like you to subscribe to our channel to support our work. After the devastation of World War II, Europe was in ruins and need of assistance. The United States, having emerged as a superpower, saw an opportunity to rebuild Europe and contain the spread of communism. Thus, the Marshall Plan was born, providing aid and investment to Western Europe. This laid the foundation for a strong relationship between the EU and the US. Over the years, this relationship has grown and expanded beyond economic cooperation. The US has been a key ally in Europe's defense and security, with NATO being a vital organization in maintaining peace and stability. And talk about this bromance, the partnership was at its peak during the Cold War. Starting with the Berlin Airlift. In 1948, the Soviet Union blockaded West Berlin, cutting off all supplies to the city. The US and its allies responded by airlifting food, fuel and other necessities to the people of Berlin for over a year. That's right, folks. They literally flew in everything the people needed. It was a defining moment an example of the EU-US alliance in action, showing that both got each other's backs. Similarly came the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1962, the Soviet Union placed nuclear missiles in Cuba, threatening the security of the US and its allies. The US and the EU banded together to demand that the missiles be removed and a tense standoff ensued. Thankfully, a peaceful resolution was reached and the world breathed a collective sigh of relief. The EU-US alliance had proven its strength once again. And let's not forget about the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. It ended the Cold War and showed the triumph of Western democracy. It was the epitome of the EU-US alliance, and many thought that in the future, this alliance would rule the Seven Kingdoms. But, well, there are no permanent enemies and no permanent friends. Only interests are permanent. And this came true during the Iraq War and the Trump administration. See, a while back, the US decided to invade Iraq because they thought there were weapons of mass destruction there. But a lot of people in Europe didn't agree with that decision and thought it was a bad idea. This caused some disagreement and hurt feelings between the US and the EU. Another reason things have been a bit rocky is because of something called our big guy Donald Trump. Well, during his time in office, he said and did some things that upset a lot of people in Europe. He didn't always play nice with other countries, and that made it hard for the US to work well with the EU. And for NATO, Trump bashed the European giants for not economically contributing to the bloc. So, basically, the US-EU love circle was not for long. These two events started to create a wedge between the Western giants. While there have been improvements with Biden in office, EU confidence in the US remains low, according to a 2021 survey. Though the EU still remains a US ally, there are major issues in the following domains. The United States and Europe are having some trade disagreements. 
They have a group called the Trade and Technology Council that is supposed to help them work together and find solutions to these disagreements. However, the things they are talking about in this group are not the biggest issues they have. They are supposed to be working on things like climate change and new technology, but they're not really talking about those things. One thing they disagree about is electric cars. The United States is giving people money to buy electric cars, but Europe thinks this is not fair and might hurt their own car companies. Europe is also planning to tax products from other countries that do not meet their environmental standards, and the US is not sure if this is allowed. Add to that, there are still differences between the EU and the US on how to tackle climate change. For example, the EU has proposed a carbon border tax, which would place tariffs on imports from countries with weaker climate policies. This proposal has been met with resistance from the US, which has argued that it could violate World Trade Organization rules and lead to a trade dispute. Overall, while the EU and the US share a common goal of addressing climate change, there are differences in approach and policy that have created a wedge between the two entities. Another thing they disagree about is technology. Europe has been making new laws to try to make sure that big companies like Facebook and Google do not have too much power or spread false information. The US is worried that these laws might hurt American companies. There are also some new rules in Europe that would make it harder for American companies to sell their services there. So, even though the Trade and Technology Council is supposed to help the US and Europe work together, they're not really talking about the big issues they have. They're still trying to figure out what they can agree on and what they cannot. But wait, it gets even more complicated. You see, China is a big part of this whole mess. China is the EU's largest trading partner, but the US is not too happy about that. They have been in a bit of a trade war with China and have to put sanctions on them. And it seems like the US is also trying to get other countries to stay away from China too. For example, they forced the UK to not work with a Chinese company called Huawei. Things are getting even messier now because there is a big disagreement between France and the US about what to do with Taiwan. France's leader, Macron, said that his country is not a vassal of the US and shouldn't have to follow its lead on this issue. But at the same time, Germany is sending representatives to Taiwan. So you can see that there is a big wedge between the EU and the US when it comes to China. It's all pretty confusing. Another issue that's causing a lot of tension between the EU and the US is the US pivot to Asia. Traditionally, we've seen the Anglo-Saxon alliance or the EU-US alliance, but now the US is shifting its focus to the Indo-Pacific region, leaving NATO irrelevant. While some might argue that this shift happened after the war in Ukraine, let's be real here. The US's main concern is to contain China not the security of Europe. To make matters worse, the recent AUKUS submarine deal between the UK, US and Australia left France out, and they were understandably upset about it. It's no wonder things are getting pretty complex and dodgy in the EU-US domain. It's a situation that's constantly evolving and we'll have to wait and see what happens next. The ongoing war in Ukraine has only deepened the divide between Europe and the United States. With the Nord 2 stream gas pipeline providing cheap gas from Russia, Germany is caught between a rock and a hard place, as the US demands that the pipeline be shut down. And at the start of the year, the US literally forced German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine, which the German leader agreed to, but after a lot of hesitation. This great power struggle has spilled over into the EU's relationship with Russia, which has been hampered by US interference. It seems that the game of global politics has well and truly taken hold of Europe, leaving little room for reconciliation in the near future. As tensions continue to rise between the US and the EU, a growing number of European leaders are advocating for a stronger, more independent Europe. 
With the threat of Russian aggression on the continent and the US showing indifference towards EU defense concerns, the idea of an EU army is no longer a far-fetched idea. However, such a move could have serious implications, not just for the transatlantic alliance, but for the global balance of power. If Europe begins to disconnect itself from the US on key issues such as climate change and trade, it could create a power vacuum that China is eager to fill. It remains to be seen how the drama between the EU and the US will unfold. If you like our content, do subscribe to the channel and do let us know your thoughts on the EU in the comments.